Hey, what's up guys? Matthew Costa here, back at it with another video for you. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I use my iPad Pro in conjunction with the Apple Pencil as a drawing tablet for my Apple computer. So let's not waste any time, let's get right into the video. We are back after that intro, and I'm super excited to bring this video to you. Uh, if you follow me over on Instagram, which if you don't, shameless plug right here, uh, you'll I put out a questionnaire and a poll because I had a little bit of this on my story, and I wanted to know whether you guys wanted this video, and I got a lot of positive feedback from people wanting this video and asking for it. So here it is. So first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to be using an app known as AstroPad, which you have to have on both the iPad and the Mac computer. Once you have both apps installed, it is super simple. So let's jump to the overhead view and I'm gonna show you how I run through this. Okay, here we are on the iPad. and Let's quickly show you AstroPad and some of its features. Now when we open up AstroPad right here, it'll automatically connect to our desktop because I have it plugged in and I have the app running on both devices. Now in order to run this, you will need an iPad Pro Air, an uh, iPad Air, two or higher or newer basically however i do recommend one of the pros or the new 2018 budget ipad just because the apple pencil support is really what makes this a viable option if you already have the hardware so what we're going to do is as you can see it gives us our desktop which is amazing before we get into photoshop and i show you how i use this i want to quickly go over some of the settings so you're going to see this ring here now if i press and hold it i can move it anywhere i like I personally like having it there, so I'm going to leave it there. You see we also have these four keyboard buttons, Shift, Control, Option, Command. Those are the most common keyboard shortcuts you're going to need while doing Illustration, especially in Photoshop. That's personally the program I use, I don't know about Adobe Illustrator. So opening up the ring, we have our settings. We can change it to finger or pencil, so I'm going to just set it to pencil. That gives us pressure sensitivity as well as tilt control if we're using brushes that support it. We can increase or decrease our brush size. We have our eraser tool, our brush tool, undo, redo, zoom in and out, which I don't use, and I'll show you why once we get into Photoshop. We also have two modes, draw mode and move and zoom. If I go to move and zoom, I can change the display. So if I want for whatever reason it to only be in the center, it's only in the center. Now to revert back, I can do 100%, which translates one pixel on my MacBook screen to one pixel on my iPad screen. Full screen is how I had it before, where it goes full width, and it gives me letterboxing. However, I personally prefer this mode. It gives me the most real estate. So we can just tap out of that by clicking the circle, and we have our desktop. And you can pretty much just use this like a mouse. You see, wherever I tap, the mouse clicks. So we're going to go into Photoshop really quickly, and we're going to pick a document to work on. Um, let's focus on this. This is a magazine I had to do for image editing class. So this is why I don't pin. Uh, this is why I don't use the zoom on the bar because it has full gesture support with fingers. So I can pinch to zoom, and if I'm zoomed in, I can use a two finger to pan. Now, one thing I love about this is being able to get really accurate masks by painting them on with a pencil rather than a trackpad or a mouse. Another huge benefit of this is I'm able to see exactly where I'm drawing as I'm drawing it. So you can see here my masking isn't perfect. So if I go right there to the text, which is right here, I can go to the layer mask and I can go here to make sure I'm in my brush tool and hitting that make, puts me in my brush tool, I'm in overlay, so I'm just going to change that really quickly to normal and I can change my opacity back up to full and I can change my color just by pressing here. So black and white, I'm going to paint with black and that's going to hide. So to undo that, press the circle, undo. And you can work with that menu up, so I tend to leave it open if I know I'm going to be undoing a lot. But say for example I need to hide it, switch my brush color to white, I can open it up again. And now, oh cancel, I'm not on the mask, I'm on the text layer, sorry. So I can paint on, oh, wrong color still, there we go. I can paint on exactly where I want the mask. As you can see, I can just keep going and fully show the text so it covers over top of the person or I can switch my brush back to black and I can hide them and it gives me the accuracy of being able to brush exactly what I want and to undo 
I can hit undo. So I'm not going to fully go into doing this, so I'm just going to close the document and not save changes. The other benefit to this is retouching. So let's open this image here. It's going to open it in camera raw, so I'm just going to open image. I don't want to do any adjustments here. This is for demonstration. I'm going to duplicate my layer, which is best practice. I always do that whenever I make any uh, raster adjustments. I do want to work non-destructively. So I'm going to use the spot healing brush. Sorry, the healing brush. So I'm going to press and hold to make sure I'm on healing brush tool. And the reason is that way I can define my source. So right here I have option down here. This is why I love having that. So I can hold the option button, tap a part of the skin I like, and then now I can paint exactly where I want with that new thing and heal over all the little mascara spots. Now my brush is too big, so what I can do is manually change it here, which I'm going to do in this case because I want to adjust the opacity, or sorry, the hardness. Make it a little bit harder, maybe at 20-30%. However, say I want to just change the size quickly, I press here, boom, brush minus, and it makes my brush smaller. So you can see now it's at 30. If I press minus again, now it's at 15. So let me define a source. And this also lets me, it may be hard for you to tell, but like whenever you use a brush in Photoshop, it gives you that circle. So I know exactly where I'm brushing, and the center of that circle is always exactly where my pen hits. So being able to see that exact place and not have to guess like I would with uh, a cheaper drawing tablet is a huge benefit for me because it means I can be accurate and save a lot of time, especially when they're on a large job where I have a lot of retouching work to do. This is also super handy for dodging and burning because again, it's just a brush. So anything that you do in Photoshop with a brush is super easy to do and I love doing with the Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro in conjunction with AstroPad. Okay guys, we are back. That was my quick little overview of some of the features I use on AstroPad, or rather in AstroPad, I don't know the grammar, it doesn't really matter. Those are the features I use and why I love using AstroPad instead of a graphics tablet. But let's talk about that. Now, final conclusion here. Do I think this is for everybody? Absolutely not. No one product solution is going to work for everybody. This works for me because I already had the iPad and the Apple Pencil. If you don't, there's a huge investment. While AstroPad itself is only around 25 Canadian dollars, put up the price right there, um, th obviously the hardware is a lot more expensive. So if you don't have the hardware, hands down, I do not recommend AstroPad because the cost of going out and buying an iPad, even the education iPad that supports the Apple Pencil but is cheaper, once you factor in the app out, Apple Pencil, it, the cost just starts to go up. It's not worth it. Whereas for the same amount of money or way less, you can get a similar size 7 or 10 inch uh, Wacom or other brand that's going to be even cheaper ta into a tablet and that'll work perfectly for you. The reason I chose AstroPad is because, like I said, I already had the hardware and I like the fact that when I draw on it, I can see exactly what I'm doing under my pen or pencil. Whereas with those standard drawing tablets, it's just a black touch surface and I'm drawing with my hand looking at my screen. I don't have the hand-eye coordination for that. So. Honest opinion, I personally love AstroPad. If you have an iPad, it is a great option. However, for those of you who don't, I would still recommend a traditional drawing tablet if you are a portrait photographer who does a lot of retouching. So I guess I would also go for commercial or really any type of photographer when you think about it. And I just touched my mic, so I'm not re-recording this. I hope you guys don't mind that little noise. I don't know what it's gonna sound like. We'll find out in editing. You know what, that, that's all for me today, guys. I had a lot of fun making this video. Uh, again, special shout out to those people who follow me on Instagram, which again, second shameless plug, follow it for requesting this video. I really had fun making it. Uh, I hope I get more video ideas from either you guys watching here on YouTube or really anyone from my Instagram, which hopefully they watch this video. We'll find out. <laughs> I'd love to see you guys in the comments. Tell me what you think. Do you have an iPad? Do you use AstroPad? Do you use other drawing tablets? What are your thoughts? What are your opinions? Please share them with me. That has been Matthew Costa. That has been all for me today. Have a great day. Like the video. 
thank you for watching. I'm all over the place. I'm just rambling right now. You get the idea. You've been on YouTube long enough. You know what to do. Boom.